impressed. I'm impressed. Huh? Yeah, but you can't create a committee tonight. Not on your chest. Call to order. This is the 13th regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. The challenge is to practice politics as the art of making what appears to be impossible possible. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren. Here. Bow. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Taft. Here. Kittleson. Excused. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ressler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Versi. Here. Wangaman. Here. Fifteen. We have a quorum. Uh, now if we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and we'll be led by Alderman Bowers. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Now there's a letter from Greg Herring to Randy Schwerer, the Harbor Center Business District uh, manager advising that uh, Mr. Herring is no longer able to serve on the board of directors of the Center Business Improvement District as of immediately. And uh, requesting that his partner be considered for appointment. Thank you for a motion, Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, move to accept the resignation. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, mayor's appointments, I don't believe we have any this evening. We have none. Uh, public forum. Okay, first on the list would be Bob Irish. If you could make it up to the microphone, please. Hi, Bob, and we would like your home address. Uh, 1034 Dillingham Avenue. Dillingham? Dillingham as in D as in dog. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, good evening. I didn't realize I would be such a draw this evening. It's nice to see that. After attending the first listening session at the Mead Public Library for the ambulance referendum, I walked away asking how did the council allow that to happen? The Greater Sheboygan Committee's presentation was filled with inconsistencies, speculation, and half-truths. Not the quality information you need to make a major decision. I will refute four issues this evening. Before I begin, I would recommend that both presentations be done using the same accounting method. The city used marginal cost, and the Sheboygan Greater Committee used cost accounting. Hard to compare, very complicated for the average citizen. I believe that should be changed. I also find it ironic that neither presenter for the Greater Sheboygan Committee are residents of the city. Issue one, the budget. The city states the ambulance portion of the budget is approximately $1 million, and the fire department portion is $7 million. That totals eight for the 2010 year. The Greater Sheboygan Committee, and I generalize, believes the ambulance costs more, say $2 million for ease of discussion. Why? Because they allocated 14 firefighter paramedics from the fire side over to the ambulance side. What the Greater Sheboygan Committee forgot to tell everyone is the fire department's portion of the 
then drops from $7 million to $6 million. Because again, the 14 paramedics went from the firefighter side over to the, uh, to the ambulance side. No matter how you slice the budget pie, the budget still adds up to $8 million. And the ambulance profit, yes, the profit, still goes into the city's general fund, keeping taxes low. Why doesn't the Greater Sheboygan Committee tell you the fire department side of the budget drops? Do they want us to think that the fire and the ambulance costs more than it really does? Is that accurate and complete information? The ambulance revenue and profit is why Alderman Jim Geisha stated several times in these chambers that the ambulance revenue is the third largest revenue source for the city and the ambulance is the main reason the city property taxes did not go up. <clears throat> Number two, response time in Manning. It takes 67 firefighters to operate three ambulances and five fire stations. Why is that important? Response time. It takes, if you take four firefighter paramedics away, a station closes and response time will suffer. Fires grow quickly, the faster the response, usually the smaller the fire, and the faster you can, we can put it out. Medical emergencies, like heart attacks and trauma, <clears throat> if you can get there within four minutes, responses, four minute responses are critical. After four minutes without blood, the brain starts to die. If you have major bleeding, it needs to be stopped or the same result. Quoting their expert, Dr. Bledsoe, the Greater Sheboygan Committee tries downplaying response times and wants you to believe that, quote, outcomes, not response times, are best indicators of performance, unquote. That's from page 13. Again, they forget to tell that their expert, Dr. Bledsoe, also states, quote, however, a survival benefit was identified when the response time was, was within four minutes for patients with intermediate or high risk of mortality, unquote. 2007 expenses not included in the ambulance costs. The Greater Sheboygan Committee also claims that the ambulance spent an additional 551,000 in 2007. That's from their page seven. The city did allocate 551,000 mainly, and I emphasize mainly, for the purchase of three ambulances. The city purchased them. A review of the records shows that the city leased them for $87,000 a year starting after 2007. Well, so much for accurate and complete information. Issue four, Rochester, New York. The Greater Sheboygan Committee touts Rochester as the model. That's ridiculous. The executive summary, page one of the final report, which they quote from, states that the city should, number uh, quote, increase penalties to the ambulance contractor for violations of the ambulance contract, unquote. Why? Their private ambulance provider had 6,459 violations to their contract in a two-year period. That's an 18% violation rate. We don't want that in Sheboygan. Has the Greater Sheboygan Committee given us accurate and complete information? You make the call. They also want to compare us, fighter fighter wise to Rochester, New York. Excuse me, Bob, would you like your additional minute? Move you to bet. Move to Grants. Second. Second. They have 207,000 people, 510 firefighters. Uh, we would need to add another 55 firefighters to the Sheboygan Table of Organization at a cost of four and a half million to be comparable to them. Keep the ambulance in the, keep the fire ambulance in our fire service together. The fire department needs, you know, the ambulance, it needs five stations and it needs 67 firefighters. And finally, keep the ambulance profits coming in that profit helps keep down property taxes. On November 2nd, vote no. Vote no and keep our taxes low. Go to firefacts.com and get the real story. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. We can, we can skip the applause on the public forum. Thank you. Um, <laughs> next. Okay, next. Now, I don't want to murder your name. It's Rebecca, is it Barrises? Okay, Rebecca, could you come up, please? And we would ask that the crowd out in the hallway and in here, please do not clap. We just want to give respect to the people that are speaking. Rebecca, can you give me your home address, please? Sure, it's 1414 North 5th Street. You probably want to pull that mic down just a little bit. Okay, is that better? 1414 North 5th? <coughs> yes. Okay, you will have five minutes. Okay. 
Council, Mayor, and community members. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak about why I feel breed-specific breed legislation is not an appropriate choice for Sheboygan. My name is Re Rebecca Barissus, and I manage a pet store and own a pit bull. I have owned pit bulls for well over 10 years, and none of my dogs have ever been aggressive towards any person or another dog. After talking to community members and people in the pet industry for the past five days, I keep hearing stories about how their experience with bully breed dogs has always been a positive one. I have heard from people who deal with dogs every day, groomers, vets, humane society workers, and doggy daycare employees. These are all people whose opinions I respect as experts in the area of dog behavior. Their personal dog aggression stories include breeds such as Lab and Cocker Spaniels which is not to say that Labs and Cocker Spaniels are any more dangerous than other dogs. All dogs can and may bite given the right set of circumstances. You should vote no to this ordinance because it will not significantly reduce the number of dog bites in Sheboygan. Breed specific legislation is wrong and there are many more effective solutions available. No one researched the following data until bully breed owners asked the police department for the specific facts late last week. Here are some facts from the city, city sorry. <laughs> okay. here, are, here are some facts from the city of Sheboygan police reports. In 2010, there have been 80 dog bites in the city year to date. <clears throat> Only 12% of bites were from pit bulls or pit bull mixes. Police reports show labs to be the second most common bite breed to bite this year. This shows that if we muzzle only one breed, we still have a significant bite problem. Some of the 12 dangerous breeds that were intended for this ordinance have no bites recorded in 2010. However, 24 dog breeds not considered for this ordinance have bitten people this year. These facts do not support a breed specific legislation in our community. The police reports for the pit bull bites show that the, a number of the incidents fall under current ordinances. Three of the 10 bites by pit bulls would have been prevented had their owners obeyed the current leash law. I am recommending that we place stiffer penalties on those not obeying the current laws. I believe that breed specific legislation is wrong. Muzzling any dog who has not shown signs of past aggression will not reduce the number of dog bites in the city. It's also the right thing to do and very negatively affects the lives of responsible <coughs> bully breed owners and their pets. I won't be able to exercise my dog safely while she's muzzled and it's against my 14th amendment rights to force me to muzzle her. It will produce anxiety in my dog and perpetuates the myth that pit bulls are dangerous. The CDC stated that BSL violates owner equal, owner's equal protection rights and violates due process. Where does it end? Not only does this ordinance call for muzzling pit bulls, it has been stated that the original intent was to include 12 breeds of dog that are on some dangerous breeds list. As I stated earlier, many of the breeds have not bitten anyone in Sheboygan this year. Let's listen to the dog experts both in our community and beyond. I have letters and emails from six veterinarians who work in Sheboygan stating that they do not agree with BSL and other reputable associations such as the AKC and National Vet Association agree. Instead, they believe the solution to preventing dog bites is legislating and enforcing behavior specific, not breed specific laws. Chief Domogalski has supported bully breed organizations in Milwaukee in the past. There is no scientific proof that genetics cause a breed of dog to be aggressive, vicious, or dangerous. Irresponsible owners are to blame. BSL does not work and it isn't fair, which is why 11 states have passed laws making it illegal to declare a dog dangerous by breed. So what do we do about it? I propose, I propose an alternative solution to BSL that includes education in schools, required obedience classes for new pet owners, enforcing current laws like the Leash and Vicious Dog Ordinances, increasing in community involvement, and creating a task force that could properly research this issue. Any research should include current City of Sheboygan data regarding all dog bites to identify where the real problem lies. We should also review other city ordinances and practices that have made a positive change in reducing the number of dog bites, not necessarily breed specific legislation that is shown to be ineffective. The police chief confirmed that this dangerous and vicious dog issue came up in February of 2010 and until now we have only considered BSL ordinances and not any other solutions. Children are most at risk when it comes to dog bites. One of the other speakers tonight will be, research, will be telling you about no and low cost programs that could be implemented in our schools. 
There is an outreach program named Create a Bite-Free Community Without Banning Dogs. They recommend a multifaceted approach which includes bite prevention programs for home service providers. Excuse me, Rebecca, would you like your extra minute? Yes, please. Motion to Thank you. Second. Second. Go ahead. <laughs> Puppy socialization programs and the formation of a dangerous dog task force made up of key players in community government and animal welfare. I recommend we develop such a task force in Sheboygan, including two key players in the community government, two professional members, and at least two public members to help research and address this problem. I spoke with the chief of police earlier this afternoon, and he said that he would be willing to either serve himself or have a police officer be a member of this team. I would be happy to volunteer as well. I am committed to keeping this community safe and at the same time not discriminating against dog breeds. I feel like it is a better way to stop irresponsible pet owners than this ordinance. <clears throat> Let's look at communities that have created effective non-breed specific dangerous dog laws such as California, Illinois, and Virginia. Thank you for your time and for keeping an open mind. It means a lot to me and many other people in this community. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. All next. Right. Next on the list is uh, Tracy Fergins. Tracy, if you could come up to the mic, please. Tracy, did I get your name right, Fergins? Okay. And I will need your home address, please. Uh, 2918 South 17th Street. South 17th? Yes. And you will have five minutes. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I stand before you today as a dog bite victim. I was two years old when our family's German short-haired pointer got tired of me irritating her. She turned and bit me in the face. My mother warned me to stay away, but as a two-year-old, I didn't listen. I also stand before you today as a dog grooming business owner. As a groomer, I have been bit a few times. I have never been bit by a pit bull, a Rottweiler, an Akita, or any other breed on the dangerous breed list. I have been bit by Las Apsos, Bichons, Maltese, and from my experience, most black Cocker Spaniels are aggressive biters too. I stand before you today as a mother, a mother who would do anything to protect my child. I stand before you today as a dog owner and lover of the animal. That said, when our Shih Tzu got possessive of me and tried to bite my daughter, I didn't wait for a law to tell me it was time to do something about the dog. I did what any responsible mother would do. I protected my child from our family pet, who for whatever reason became vicious towards her and anyone else that got close to me. After months of working on this and seeing the situation actually getting worse, we euthanized him. I am now the owner of three licensed dogs, a yellow lab, a boxing lab and hounder, and a nine month old cane corso mastiff mix who fits your description of a dog with pit bull characteristics. Lewis is by no means vicious, he barks and he would love to chase squirrels, but we need to remember he's an animal first. All dogs are animals first. We love them and they do become a part of our family, but responsible owners need to remember, no matter what breed of dog you have, they're all animals first. Take for example, the Pomeranian, who in October of 2000 killed a six week old baby. These four pound dogs were originally bred as guard dogs. The uncle of the baby left the dog unattended with the infant. To single out one breed or 12 breeds is ridiculous. It's been proven that legislating against a particular breed does not reduce dog bites or bite fatalities. In the 1990s, the UK banned all pit bull type dogs. However, this ban did not reduce the number of dog bites. Denver County has been rated as having the highest dog related injury rate of the state in spite of a 20 year old breed ban. They're now repealing that ban. Increased taxpayer dollars are one of the reasons and the Justice Department's opinion that the view sweeps too broadly may be another. Calgary, Canada, on the other hand, has the lowest dog bite rates in 25 years without enacting BSL. It's irresponsible to say that your dog would never bite someone. All dogs are capable. While talking to a local vet on Friday, he told me he sees more bites from Labradors and Dalmatians. Are they next on the list? 
We need to focus on educating children and parents on how to prevent dog bites. Maybe the answer lies in programs in schools teaching kids how to behave around dogs, which I have signed a petition to our senator about. After all, we teach them to learn crossing the street and how to wash their hands correctly. I would like to shift our focus to some famous vicious dogs, the Michael Vick dogs. In the book, The Lost Dogs, author Jim Garant takes us on a journey with and about these dogs from their rescue in 2007 up to present day. There were a total of 66 live dogs removed from the property. 44 pit bull type dogs remain today. Of those pits rescued from one of the most well-funded and largest dog fighting rings in our country, most are living with families. Families that have children and other dogs. Some have earned certification of good citizens and others are therapy dogs. Remember, these are some of the most vicious fighting dogs in our country. I am sad, appalled, and disgusted at Vic for what he has done. However, a small part of me is thankful. Not for his abuse of animals, but for bringing it out in the open, for showing criminals that dog fighting is not acceptable, it's illegal, and it should be punished. Thankful also for proving to the non-believers that pit bulls and pit bull type dogs are not vicious by nature. Only two of the Vic dogs were euthanized after their assessment due to aggression issues. If you have been lucky enough to know or love a pit bull, you know that these dogs are very full of life. They're athletic, vivacious, happy, smart dogs. Tracy, they love attention. Would you like your extra minute? Move to approve. Second. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> They're athletic, vivacious, happy, smart dogs. They love attention. They'll hog your bed and your heart. <clears throat> to close, I would like to quote the website dogbitelaw.com. As a practical matter, the current tide of public outrage should be focused on the enactment of measures that would deal effectively with the entire epidemic, not merely the breeds that kill. <coughs> it would appear unwise to enact all kinds of control on one or two breeds, not necessarily because it would be unfair, but because it would produce narrow and therefore unsatisfactory results. The war against crime isn't a war against just the bank robbers, but all criminals. The war against drugs isn't a war against just the Colombian drug lords, but all the drug lords. For the same reason, the, bite, the dog bite epidemic must not focus on two breeds and stop there. The war on this epi epidemic must be comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Next. All right, next on the list, it's either Angel or Angela. We didn't get, is, is it Angela? It's Angel. Angel, we got it right the first time. Cleansing, please, come up. <coughs> Angel, can I have your home address? 3727 Highway 42. And you will have five minutes. Hello, my name is Angel Cleansing, and I am here this evening to oppose the VSL ordinance that is being proposed by the city of Sheboygan. As a responsible dog owner, I would like to acknowledge there is a need to educate our society to protect themselves from dog bites. However, signaling out one breed for control ignores the true scope of the problem and will not result in a responsible approach to protecting our community's citizens. Since its inception in 1989, BSL has not reduced the number of severe, severe dog bites or deaths. The statistics have held steady for the last 40 years. However, millions of taxpayer dollars have been spent while law enforcement authorities waste inordinate amounts of time policing a breed because the breed itself should not be singled out. Not all pit bull type dogs are dangerous, just as we know not all poodle type dogs are friendly. Pit bull concerns are based on fear and panic, not logic. The Center for Disease Control supports the position that irresponsible <coughs> owners, not breeds, are the chief cause of dog bites. They have done studies that indicate the most dangerous breed of dog changes with popularity and reputation. I have suggestions for our community but before I get to those, I would like to share with you some pit bull facts that you may not be aware of. 
Pit bulls are commonly used as therapy dogs. Whether they are visiting a senior care facility helping someone recover from an emotional accident, pit bulls are making a mark as an outstanding therapy dog. Pit bulls are used in search and rescue work. Pit are great with kids. They weren't referred to as the nanny's dog for nothing. Pit bulls are not human aggressive. In fact, quite the opposite is true of the breed. They are gentle and loving dogs. An individual dog from any breed can become unsound and have behavior problems. Early in the 20th century, pit bulls were actually the number one family dog. Unfortunately, dog fighters use pit bull breeds because they are strong and agile, and they have a desire to please their owners. Unfortunately, the pit bulls that are abused in this manner contribute to the negative myths that surround them. The United Kennel Club notes that pit bulls were never bred to be aggressive towards people, and that this is uncharacteristic of the breed. Dogs that are abused, however, are more likely to become human aggressive no matter what the breed. Pit girl bulls are grievously mistreated in the attempt to turn them into fighting dogs and guard dogs. And the United Kennel Club also notes that a pit bull is not the best choice for a guard dog since they are extremely friendly, even with strangers. And despite what some people believe, pit bulls actually make great pets for families. In tests that were done by the American Temperament Test Society, pit bulls were generally less aggressive when faced with a confrontational situation that produced negative reactions out of many other stereotypically friendly dog breeds, such as a beagle or a poodle. Here are some of a few test scores from the American Temperament Test Society. The American Pit Bull received an astonishing 86% and a mixed breed an astonishing 86%, while the beloved Collie breed scored much lower at 79.2%. The mini poodle, a 77%, and a lapsolapso, 70.4%, and yet you want to label all of the pit breeds dangerous? The Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports that 77% of dog bites are from the pet of family or friends, and 50% of attacks occur on a dog owner's property, and that among children, the rate of a dog bite-related injury is highest for those ages five to nine. So what can we do? Education is the key to reducing dog bites. Research shows that just one hour of dog safety training can reduce dog bites by 80%. Chris Crawford from pitsake.org runs a nonprofit organization to educate school-aged children on safety around dogs. The materials are available to purchase online. We teach our children to look both ways before crossing the street. We teach them to never accept rides from strangers. Excuse we me, Angel, would you like your extra minute? Yes, please. The ground. Second. Second. Go ahead. We teach them gun safety, and we have the D.A.R.E. program. Let's use our tax dollars wisely and invest in a program for dog safety instead of trying to enforce a BSL that is ineffective and inhumane. 90% of prevention is knowledge. Dangerous animals should be labeled as such because of their actions or behavior and not because of their breed. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Angel. Next. Uh, last on the list would be Eileen Ribbons. Eileen, if you could come to the front, please. Eileen, can I have your home address, please? My name is Eileen Ribbons, and the address is 3107 North 20th Street, Sheboygan. 20th? 20th. Okay. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. My name is Eileen Ribbons, and I'm the president of Sheboygan County Humane Society. Thank you for allowing me a few moments to address you this evening on the matter of General Ordinance 281011 regarding vicious animals and regulations on pit bull and pit bull mixed dogs. The Sheboygan County Humane Society supports your efforts to implement an ordinance on vicious animals. 
We, however, strongly oppose breed-specific restrictions. There are numerous studies that show that breed-specific legislation does not work, may be considered unconstitutional, and has not hold well, up well to challenges in courts across the nation and the world. We enclosed a number of supplements with an informational packet that we delivered to you earlier today in support of our position. We have also reviewed the requirements of the City of Milwaukee Pitbull and Rottweiler Ordinance. It appears that General, General Ordinance Number 281011 by Alderperson Versailles was patterned after the Milwaukee program. While we appreciate the Alderperson's compassion and efforts to protect the public from dog bites, please bear in mind that the City of Sheboygan does not now have the infrastructure in place to enforce this ordinance, as is the case in Milwaukee. Milwaukee built and maintains a government-run and a government-funded state-of-the-art animal control facility called MADAC with a $2.7 million annual tax-funded budget. They have a fleet of five designated vehicles equipped to humanely capture and transport animals. They employ four full-time and four part-time animal control officers who are designated solely to animal control and enforcement and ordinance enforcement. In addition, it takes 28 full and part-time employees to operate MADAC and serves a human population of 900,000 people, spending $3 per capita annually to operate the animal control facility. With Sheboygan's population at approximately $50,000, we could expect a similar program into Sh in Sheboygan to cost about $150,000 per year. We must ask if Sheboygan is prepared to fund this ordinance in these difficult economic times. We have also provided for you a blue fact sheet entitled, Did You Know? Our research reveals a serious problem of enforcement of existing local and state laws in the city of Sheboygan. According to our statistics, over 75% of the dogs currently living in the city of Sheboygan are not licensed. As licensing ensures rabies vaccinations with chained, wandering, and stray animals are more likely to encounter wild animals and wild animals be more likely to be rabies barriers. Ignoring licensing requirements and rabies vaccination law is not in the best interest of sound public protection and safety. We have also analyzed dog bite statistics from the City of Sheboygan records from January 1 to September 22nd of this year. There have been 80 reported bites in that time period. Of the 80 bites, 10 or 12.5 percent have been from pit bulls or pit bull mixes, while 24 bites or a full 30 percent were from dogs that are small and of toy breeds. It would appear from these numbers that targeting pit bulls will not necessarily protect residents from dog bites. Should this ordinance pass as written, and the targeted bull breeds may become, may become less common in Sheboygan only to be, be replaced by other breeds of dogs. While we acknowledge that pit bulls have become the dog of choice for gangs, dog fighting rings, and other criminal elements, it does not mean that the pit bull breeds or their owners are bad people and removing pit bulls from your community will not stop your gang problem. You may find that the unsavory criminal element will simply sidestep the ordinance and embrace other breeds you have not even thought of, like the Presa Canario and the Argentinian Mastiffs and other designer-created dogs. Of course, we extend our heartfelt understanding to the suffering of victim of dog bites like those suffered by young A.J. Sterling. It should be noted that the dog that bit A.J., came from West Bend to Sheboygan when West Bend banned pit bulls. Excuse me, Eileen, would you like your extra minute? Yes. Move to Grant. Second. Go ahead. This dog was not licensed and he did not have a current rabies vaccination. We are sure that it is not your intent to pass Sheboygan's problem to other neighboring communities, but that could be the net result 
if this ordinance passes. We believe that General Ordinance 281011 should be sent back to the drawing board for further consideration. We would truly appreciate being included in discussions on creating a vicious animal or animal control ordinance. <clears throat> to date, your Humane Society has not been included in these discussions. We are animal experts. We believe that we could help you craft an economical and fair ordinance while protecting public interests and respecting the rights of responsible pet owners. We also ask that you consider including funding for animal control in your 2010 uh, city budget so that new programs can be adequately funded. Although we appreciate the council's attempt to solve community problems through law, we know the matters will only be made worse by passing breed-specific regulation that unfairly victimized the innocent Excuse me, while failing to accomplish the laudable goals you have intended. Thank you very much. That's all we have for <coughs> Thank you, Eileen. Uh, that's all for public forum this evening under mayor's announcements. I'll keep this brief tonight. Thank you, everybody, for speaking at public forum. Uh, only one announcement this evening. Door-to-door uh, -door survey will be held on October 16th, 2010 from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Southside neighborhood in the approximate area of Pennsylvania Avenue to the river south to the lake to Union Avenue to South 14th Street. Basically what this is is a neighborhood survey uh, where we survey all the residents in the neighborhood about concerns in their neighborhood. We did this to start the Gatewood, Gateway uh, Neighborhood Study, the Neighborhood Association, the Gateway Neighborhood Cleanups. Uh, we are now moving to the south side, and this is the first step of it. So we are looking for volunteers to help us out with this. I know I did this myself several years back. I know uh, um, Alder person uh, Montemayor was there. I don't know if anybody else currently on the so, council. Alderman Hanna might have been there. He's nodding his head. Um, it's, a, it's, it's actually very eye-opening when you go through and do these surveys, and the public is, is more than willing to join us, too. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a uh, set list uh, that you ask the residents. Um, it's an anonymous survey, and we will cover the entire area. It's the start of addressing the needs of the neighborhood. Uh, that will be on October 16th. Uh, the meeting place will be at St. Peter Claver Church on South 12th Street, but I ask everybody, if you would like to participate, to please call Chad Peleshek in our city development office at 459 3383. That's 459 3383. And that's Chad. He's going to lead the charge on this. Um, I will be uh, hopefully participating in this myself as long as it's on my schedule. And hopefully we can get some older persons to help us also in the general public. That is all I have for Mayor's announcements. Um, I would look uh, to uh, poll number 13. Dash 44 forward, Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I do ask as acting president uh, to pull forward 1344 at this time. Uh, and then um, uh, make a motion to uh, place on file. Okay, we have a <coughs> motion to pull it forward and a second. Second. Next second on file, too. Okay, on pulling forward, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Document is pulled forward. Now we, we have a motion to file second and a second okay so the discussion right now is on filing this document under discussion alderman versi your honor uh, vice president rinfleisch please continue uh, under discussion um i uh reason i made a motion to file instead of to refer back to committee is i think we do need to start over on this one we heard the last speaker from the Sheboygan county humane society ask to participate in the rewriting of uh, a perhaps more strict law than we currently have in a way that makes some sense. Uh, so I urge uh, Alderman Versi to, uh, to do that, uh, but at this time to file it and then just, uh, hopefully we can start on over. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, to let the, the public in the chambers know to file the document means to uh, oh, kill it, sorry. basically. Alderman Versi, Thank please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as far as discussion goes, actually I was bringing it to motion to hold the document because we were gonna use it as a document, working document, pull it back, and I have uh, several dog owners um, next committee, next council meeting, I'd like to bring forward and, and create a special committee for them, which would include several older people, um, police chief, or whoever he designs. Um, the city attorney, someone from Humane Society already stepped forward, um, and two dog owners, along with that, with a local veterinarian. Um, so instead of filing it, putting it on hold, 
and working with the, the current document with those, with those people and letting them have their input. Okay, thank you, Alderman Versi. Uh, under further discussion, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it appears from emails and everything else, education is the issue. I think the cleanest way to do this is to file this document, uh, start from scratch, form a committee, get the right people, uh, the city involved, and come back forward. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Uh, once again, Alderman Vice President Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't, I'm not opposed to the uh, creation of the committee. I'm not opposed to, uh, I think it's a great idea and a great step forward. Um, a week into this, we're already further than we were before. We actually are discussing perhaps the problem and looking at creative solutions. Uh, so I'm not opposed to the, uh, to the uh, creation, creation of that committee and urge that it is created. Uh, but I agree with Alderman Hanna that the cleanest way to start over is to file this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we file this and all this information, I would hope we would still be able to use this information and some of these basic <coughs> ideas in the new committee that's going to be looking at something having to do with the safety of the citizens in Sheboygan. I'm sure that that could be brought forward to the committee. Okay, that doesn't mean this is dead. This particular, this particular information. It, mean, it means that this uh, uh, particular ordinance is dead, but the information itself can be brought forward to the committee. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I like the idea of forming the committee. Uh, a year or two ago when I was chairman of law and licensing, we had a controversial issue with the, with the local bar owners about uh, having outdoor street cafes. And the ordinance that came forward was very controversial. And I believe you were mayor then, I'm not sure, maybe it was Mayor Perez. We appointed a committee that consisted of the bar owners, the city attorney, and a couple of interested, interested parties, and we came back at, with I a... I think at that point I was just a frequenter of the street cafes. So oh, okay. <laughs> Very Melville. <mellow. laughs> uh, but anyway, after we formed that committee and they met a couple times, I think over a month period, we came back with a document that was acceptable to all of the interested parties. And I think Alderman Versi has a good idea with forming this committee with all the interested parties, some, the police chief or somebody from his office, the assistant city attorney, uh, somebody from the Humane Society, a local vet, and a couple of dog owners. And I think if they sit down uh, and hash this out, they can come back with uh, something that's palatable to everybody to achieve the goals that I think have to be achieved. And that is one of the big ones. Uh, again, I don't believe that the dogs are the problem. I think it's some irresponsible owners, and I think we have, to get, we have to get a grasp on that through education or whatever. So I would just make a, a, friendly, uh, a friendly addition to uh, Alderman Versi and that, the, that if the committee, if the council agrees to form the committee, that we do it by the next council meeting and that that committee meet and report back to the council with a revised uh, document within 30 days. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Um, the question at hand right now is filing of the document. Mm -hmm. Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. And I agree with Alderman Boren. I think that's fine, just so that we actually do it. Because I do have constituents in my district that are terrified. And I want <coughs> their fears to be addressed. And as Eileen Ribbon said, 75% of the dogs in the city are not licensed. So that, as far as I can tell, that 75% are not responsible pet owners. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor, again. I wish that we'd have this to kind of turn out for other city issues that we have, because maybe our community would be even better, better off altogether. So um, as far as creating that, we need to do it in a timely manner. I don't want this to get, like Alderman Boren said, pushed under the carpet and not talked about again. It brought awareness to everybody. They opened a lot of people's eyes, and that was my intent with this, to do that. And obviously it did. So we need to work on this, and it needs to be done um, if we can do it within the 30 days to no longer than 45 days. And there can be a document brought into the next council meeting on this. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Um, on the, the motion to file, uh, we have no further lights. So we will go to a vote. An I vote will be to file the document. Excuse me, Mayor. Um, Alderman Bourne, I'm just going to put what you said to the side, not make it an official motion. Is that correct? We'll uh, I'll, I'll wait to make the motion until after the vote to file. Okay, thank you. 
right. I vote is to file. I vote is to file. Roll call, please. Foreign? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 <coughs> ayes. Motion carries. Document is filed. You can clap now. Okay. Thank you everybody for, for being here. We are going to take about a, uh, about a 10 minute recess and allow the council chambers to clear out here. Somewhere he must be chasing the cameras yet. They're dragging him off like Mussolini. <laughs> I hope he didn't step outside. <laughs> <laughs> If we're all present, if we can uh, call this meeting back to order here. Um, Alderman Boren, you wanted to make a motion? <coughs> Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryan. I'm going to make a motion that a uh, committee be formed by the next council meeting, which I believe is on October 18th, and that the committee will consist of the chief, <coughs> of, chief of police or his designee, the assistant city attorney, uh, the representative from the Humane Society or her designee, uh, a local veterinarian, three alder persons, and three city of Sheboygan uh, dog owners. And that the uh, report come back to the council uh, at the second council meeting in November, which is on November 15th. That's my motion. Okay. Second. Does everybody understand the motion? Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Under discussion, alder person Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm hoping that the dog, the three dog owners that are chosen, we're going to check to be sure they have a license for their dog. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got two already. Okay. Um, and truthfully, uh, Alderperson Montemayor, I know we've looked into uh, having vets license dogs at one point, but it's five dollars for a license I believe and the money goes to the county and we had some so I think that uh, issue should be looked at at the same time uh, as far as uh, having uh, city veterinarians license dogs while they're in the vet's office if you're a city resident they would automatically license your dog um, and it would it might uh, uh, expedite the matter somewhat 
Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a friendly amendment to, to change that wording to make it three licensed dog owners. Uh, if Alderman Bourne would be amenable to that. It's fine. And then my second point is, I know uh, uh, Alderperson Montemayor feels strongly about this topic, so I would uh, suggest I would make a friendly amendment that she be one of the designated Alderpersons for that committee, one of the three. That will go in the motion, though. Yeah. Um, I would put that in the appointments. Yeah, we can we can put that in the appointments. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'd ask for you to appoint Alderman, Alderperson Montemayor to that. I committee. can give you a verbal on that. Thank you. Thanks, sir. You know where we're at, it, Mayor. You know, Joe Heisman's got nothing going on with his back. I think he, <laughs> <laughs> I think he would be excellent on that committee. What a what a railroad job that is. Eh? Okay, uh, Alderman Boren, did you have something more? Yeah, I had a question for Attorney McLean. Uh, Attorney McLean, generally on these uh, uh, these special committees, are the staff from the city are they uh, ex officio members? The only voting members would be. The, 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 po the police chief or his designee, would it be appropriate they be ex officio or the assistant city attorney or can they be voting members or is that for the committee to decide when they meet? Normally staff is ex officio, <coughs> correct? Um, you know, that, that's why I have a problem with creating a committee right here. Uh, those are sorts of things you should consider and uh, in creation of the committee. A special committee, you can designate anybody you want to be a voting member uh, or or a non-voting member uh, you know that's totally up to the council Alderman Bourne. I'll add to my motion that the uh, uh, they all be voting members except the assistant city attorney I got that Sue sure okay thank you Alderman Bourne. Alderman Versi thank you your honor I was just going to mentioned the other two to be appointed to the committee would be me myself because part of my ordinance here I'd be part of that and also Alderman Sampson would be the third alder person for that committee okay we're not actually appointing alder persons but I will suggestions take, I will take that into the account in making the appointments to the committee Can I ask Alderman Bourne, can I just go through it again? It's the chief of police or the designee, assistant city attorney, someone from the Sheboygan County Humane Society, one local vet, three aldermen, and three licensed dog owners. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Are there any other designees in that list besides the chief? Could the Sheboygan uh, County Humane Society? The woman, the woman that made the presentation tonight did an excellent job, but she's available or her designee. I From forgot the what it is. Society, that's the president. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So do we uh, put this to a? Uh, sounds like my bad. Oh, yeah. Okay. All in favor of uh, establishing this committee, say aye. 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 Opposed. We will get to work on it. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, to the consent agenda. Uh, Vice President Rindfleisch, if I can make one note here, 13-3 <coughs> will lie over, so the consent agenda will be 13-1 and 13-2 and 13-4 through 13-14. 13-3 lies over. Vice President Rindfleisch, please. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, with the exception of the one, with the exception of the one document you just mentioned, I move that all ROs be accepted and filed. All RCs be accepted <coughs> and adopted, and all resolutions and ordinances be passed on the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Bauk. <laughs> That's two votes, isn't it? Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ressler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bercy. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Communications and <laughs> petitions 1315 and 1316 to be referred. Reports of officers to 1317 uh, and 
Thirteen eighteen. Are those uh? Okay, thirteen seventeen by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration, stating that they have reviewed the proposed annexation for DHP LLC and found it to be in the public interest. Vice President Renflesh. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Hammond. Aye. Hanna. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ressler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangerman. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Bauk. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1318 report of officer by the redevelopment authority submitting findings related to the blight determination regarding the former Walmart parcel located at 609 South Taylor Drive and passing the attached resolution. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file and the attached resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. I guess the uh, question is what the attached resolution is. Do you have the attached resolution? I'm oh, sorry, Can yes. It's on the back. It's on the inside of 1318. The resolution. There's no number because it's a new one. That is no longer necessary. Uh, my recommendation is just to. Uh, accept and file the communication and file the resolution uh, that was supposed to have been pulled. Uh, uh, as you may have heard, Walmart uh, agreed to release the restrictive covenants on the property so there won't be any need to pursue uh, any further acquisition of the property to, to uh, get those restrictions released. I so amend my resolution, my motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, amend as uh, recommended by Attorney McLean, Alderman Bauck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question. If we designate it, if we go ahead and pass this anyway, does that help Chad with getting perhaps federal dollars? Is there any upside to this blighted area as we develop it further? Can we get help if it's designated blighted? Uh, Chad, Chad's not an official department head. We have a motion. Open the floor. Microphone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I would just ask a question of Attorney McLean. Is that required for, I thought it was required for the, uh, if we were to move forward with the TIF process? No, the, uh, what's important on the TIF is that the property is designated to be blighted property. That's happened by the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, what the resolution was proposed to do uh, was merely advising the council that the Redevelopment Authority had designated the property as blighted and requested advance approval for acquisition of the property, uh, which would have required a two-thirds vote of the council, which would have been a precursor to the Rede Redevelopment Authority proceeding to condemn the property. In uh, order to move against Walmart. Right. right. And that's and no longer that. necessary. Right. So there are no additional the, benefits. The property's been designated as blighted, and that's all you need. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a, a question. If there was any uh, a motion to, to move forward on condemnation of the property, could that be brought up in the future? Yes, if that needed to happen, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chad. Okay, so we have a, uh, a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I just want a point of clarification. When I'm reading this, um, the second to last paragraph, the RDA finds that the property to be blighted property pursuant. It doesn't say anything about condemnation or that process. You know, I know the RDA being on that recommended it be blighted. Does the council not have to approve that recommendation? No, the, uh, the redevelopment authority makes the determination that the property is blighted. This is merely advising the council that the redevelopment authority did find the property to be blighted. Fair enough, thank okay. you. Okay, does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can uh, clarify this a little bit. The, uh, the introductory portion of the resolution 
uh, was old language, and that really should not have been included in on this resolution. The, the be it further resolved is, is really okay that the RDA <coughs> forward this resolution to the council for further action in the best public interest of the city, but that, that was a resolution that the Redevelopment Authority adopted. Uh, <coughs> all, uh, this really is, is not a resolution of the city council the intent was to submit to council the resolution that the redevelopment authority adopted. So what you have is the attachment by Alderman Hammond dated October 4th. That resolution was passed by the redevelopment authority. And this is just submitting that resolution. You look at the RO on the first page, submitting a resolution of finding related to the blight determination located, at, you know, the former Walmart site. <coughs> it's not intended to be a resolution to be acted upon by the council, but merely the redevelopment authority submitting the resolution that it acted on finding the property to be blighted to the city council. So you can just accept and file the, the communication. Vice President Renflesh. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the explanation. I was confused when I first saw that because it was attached to the back. But if you look at our agendas, it's not actually listed under 1318 as uh, a document to be acted upon. Uh, for the council's sake, you just want to flip back to say 1313 in your agenda. There's an example of what it should look like if there's an attached resolution uh, with that indentation with the, the sub one. Uh, that's not the case here, so I misspoke when I made the motion to include that. It was not meant to be. So disregard the motion. I mean, to accept it and just file it. Okay, so we have a motion to accept and file. <laughs> and a second. Under discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. We can do no lies. How about all eyes? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good, good, good. Okay, 1319 through 1330 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1331 by Alderman Versi authorizing the Purchasing Agent and Director of Public Works to develop plans and specifications relative to the remodeling of the first floor of City Hall <coughs> and issue a request for bids for the provision of materials and labor necessary to complete the remodeling in an expedient manner. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to put the, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. And in yep. further discussion, uh, the reason behind this is to get um, this done in a timely manner and also try and save the city some money <coughs> by having the bids go out. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Any further discussion? Alderman Boren? Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I was wondering if uh, uh, Director Bittner could uh, just explain if he's got, uh, I was on building use last year, but I'm not under this year. What his proposed cost if we do it in-house rather than going out of house. Does Director Bittner have any idea on that? Could he speak to that, please? Bill? And also the time frame for getting it done. The budget the council made available um, for the 2010 year to do this work on the first floor east side was 145,000. Uh, we were in the process, or are in the process, of finalizing all the cost estimates. Most of that, when we do it, we proceeded on a couple other remodelings, kind of acting as our own general, using a number of subcontractors, and then doing an amount of the work ourselves. We were just in the, sort of in the middle of getting those estimates. This will give us the opportunity to attempt to take it as one central bid. This came out of discussions of the Building Use Committee, which we're trying to expedite the project a little bit, and they'll be com comparable. And needless to say, we'll, uh, we have to stay within the, in, the, in that $145,000 available, uh, but this will give us a, a more comprehensive contracting than we've used in the past. If, but I do not have a item by item estimate yet we were working that and are still doing that. If I could just follow up. Yeah. Please. Uh, Director Bittner then, from what you're saying, some of, the, some of the work might still be done by your people, but you're gonna sub get bids on subcontracting sub where necessary? Is that what well, we- Well, we intended to take 
uh, and contract out the general work, but there's, there's contracting we'll still do, such as carpeting, such as furniture, those would be independent. But we'll look at getting one more comprehensive bid than we would have otherwise used. When we get those numbers, I think it'll set our direction because it'll tell us what we can accomplish for what money and how quickly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Borden. Can you hang on a second, Bill? Alderman Hanna, no, do you have I anything for? If I understand you, uh, Bill, uh, when all the numbers come in, you'll figure out what the general, what the external contracts are doing, what your internal folks will do. Yep. The, the numbers don't change as far as the council's concerned. I think the, the building use committee was hoping to move more of it sure. into contracting and more expeditiously complete the project. One of the things we've been doing, I think made no secret about it, is that we've been doing it as time is available, trying to keep budget dollars real low. Uh, well, that, that's kind of a slow process, and I think the Building Use Committee, we're hoping to have enough dollars designated through the council that they could get it expired. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Director Bittner. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1332 by Alder Persons Hannah, Ressler, and Vanderweel establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates for the medical benefit plan effective for January 2011 coverage. Alderman Hannah. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Our rates are going up with market rates. There's, there's no surprise here. We're trying to do as much as we can to, to keep costs down. Um, but we, uh, we need to move forward with these so that you can move forward with the uh, new insurance carrier. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Oh, we have uh, somebody beeping in. Alderman Bowers? Uh Am I correct in assuming that uh, the, the rates for going to go up approximately 12% and 12 Did I read that right? That's yep. roughly what I saw. Okay. Yeah, it's right. about 12% bump. And, well, while it's exorbitant, there's not much we can do about it. I, I read somewhere the national number was what, 10 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're right in the hunt there. Is, is there any way we can ask some of the unions to help out on this? Um, that That's, is all. That is all part of our contract negotiations is, is trying to yeah. trying to tweak our medical plan along with using the uh, county clinic uh, going with a copay for off et cetera that will be part of contract negotiations come upcoming um, before the final budget is settled okay thank you alderman Bow. thank you mr mayor and i'd encourage uh, our colleague all of us to pray for more hope and change in november that may help as well thank you again alderman Bow. Happy to help. <laughs> could, he, could, I, could I hear him say that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. <laughs> Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1333 by all other persons. Hannah Ressler, Vanderweel, and Versi lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a director of development and planning in the city development department. Alderman Hannah. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Long overdue that we get this going. That's this right. It's a critical part of the puzzle. If there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. 
Longerman. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1334 through 1341 to be referred. Reports of Committee 7, 1342, by law and licensing, recommend denying taxi cab driver's license number 8166 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Redflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Please continue. Thank you. Is um, Shane Dean here? Here, Your Honor. Please continue. All right. Um, Shane revealed a few items on his uh, application, including underage tobacco and alcohol and damaged property in 2006, 8, and 9, but failed to list uh, disorderly conduct in 2009. They failed to yield right away in 2009, an inattentive driving in 2009, and a seatbelt violation in 2010. Um, our recommendation is to, base, uh, to deny is based on the non-cooperation. He had two chances to appear and did not. Um, but I also wanted to point out uh, several traffic offenses for a taxi cab driver we felt was not appropriate at the time, too. Very good. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries uh, 1343 to be referred. 1344 has already been taken. Ordinance introduced 10. 1345 to be referred. Matters laid over. 1238, General Ordinance Number 22-10-11 by Alderman Wangaman and Decker, annexing territory into the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Wangaman. <coughs> I make a motion to be document before upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1239, General Ordinance Number 23-10-11 by Alderpersons Kittleson, Vanderweel, and Versi, amending the Municipal Code so as to change the job description for the position of Director of Planning and Development in the City Development Department. Alderperson Vanderweel. Surprise, surprise. Alderperson <laughs> Kittleson's not here. We need to put the ordinance upon its passage. I make a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. This is simply amending the job description. <coughs> there is none. Roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangam? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 12 40, General Ordinance Number 24 10 11 by Alderpersons Kittleson, Vanderweel, <coughs> and Versi, amending the municipal code so as to change the job description for the position of city assessor in the assessor's department. Alderperson Vanderweel. <laughs> Make a motion to put the, the ordinance upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion, we have Alderman Hammond. Probably a dumb question, but just out of curiosity, what changed in the, in the job description? <coughs> just out of curiosity. Um, good question. Uh, is Tom Rice here this evening? No, he's not. 
No, I think, I think it, it was, you know, most of our job descriptions we are updating. <laughs> as, we, as we replace positions, we're up, updating job descriptions. So I'm sure it's probably just an updating of the, of the description. I don't think that was anything major. So. Fair enough. Thank you. Trying to bring everything into the 21st century or somewhere around there. Steve? Um, along that vein, I noticed one typo in item 13, essential duties. It says attend meeting and council secessions. I, th I think it should be council. It wasn't me. <laughs> Tom Rice isn't Sessions. here. We'll blame him for that one. Sessions. Does that need to be to amend to amend at this point? I'll second. What council. So we have a, a motion to amend the typo in the document. All in favor say aye in amending. Aye. aye. Opposed. Aye. Document is amended. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Wrestler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Longaman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bow? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Path? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Uh, 1346 will be referred to public protection and safety. 1347 will be referred to public protection and safety. Uh, 1348, an RO by the city clerk granting various licenses. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, a question first uh, for the city clerk. Is this to be passed this evening or referred? Pass this evening? Okay. I move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. Any discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 1349, a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the issuance and sale of not to exceed $2,545,000 General Obligation Refunding Bonds, Series 2010-C. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Ressler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bow? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1350 will be referred to law and licensing. Uh, 1351. Move the file. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Heidemann to file and a second <laughs> on the filing of the document under discussion. We've already taken care of this. Yes. And we've got enough to do with public protection and safety already. <laughs> We're going to bring the deer issue back here shortly. So. <laughs> what about cell phones? <laughs> cell phones is a good one. Okay, all in favor of filing say aye. 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 Opposed? Documents filed. Okay, notice of intent to discharge the <coughs> Building Use Committee regarding the following documents requested by Alder Person Rinfleisch. 12-20, RC number 218-10-11 by Public Works recommending authorizing entering into contract for installation of an ADA compliant entrance ramp and entrance ways for City Hall. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to discharge the document from Building Use Committee. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this document was referred to uh, that building use committee, um, but it was referred to late to get on the agenda. Uh, we do need to take action upon this so that we can get the bids out there and have working can begin shortly uh, at, this, at this meeting this evening. So that's why we're making that motion to discharge it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to discharge the committee under discussion. <coughs> we have Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two questions. One is, um, are we obligated to put an entrance ramp in the front, given there's an elevator in the back? 
The point of order. We're just going to uh, vote on the motion to discharge and then oh, we'll go into the document. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, first on the motion to discharge, under discussion on the motion, motion to discharge only. Does anybody want to participate in that discussion? If nobody does, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the committee is discharged. Now on the document itself we're going to discuss, Vice President Rindfleisch. Sure. Um, I was going to allow the Chair of the Public Works to make that motion, but uh, since it was originally designated to be there, uh, and I asked to be referred later back to my committee, which we now have discharged. So uh, I will make the motion to uh, accept uh, and adopt the report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. If I can uh, answer a couple and questions. Put the um, resolution upon its passage. <coughs> put the resolution upon its passage. Uh, regarding the, the ramp itself, uh, right now we do have the elevator in the back. Um, it's uh, a... a it's inadequate to say the least for handicapped people to have to come in through the back door. Um, there's constantly problems with the lift that we have in the back. Uh, I personally have witnessed uh, people trying to use that and, and having a hard time getting in and out. Um, uh, several months back, there was a man with his, his young daughter in a wheelchair that was having some real trouble. Um, there's no reason why we have to have people coming in the back door that are, that are handicapped. So this ramp is going to uh, actually begin on the, um, Bill is the expert on it, but it's, go it's going to begin on the <coughs> east end of the building, correct? It's going to come up the front. Yeah, but it's going to come in the alleyway, correct? So it will, so the, the entrance to the garage over here is where it will begin. And it'll, it'll be a very gradual slope coming up the front. Uh, it'll be very discreet. So it won't ruin the appearance of the building itself. So. One more question, Mr. Mayor. Please. And for our city clerk, what does BAWTT mean? I know what accept and adopt and refer to uh, building. That's just my notes. Before action was taken, they're on. Sorry. Thank you. Just want to make my sure all the my shorthand. Masonic symbolism in there is understood. It's <laughs> <laughs> part of the conspiracy. <laughs> Okay, is there uh, any further discussion on this issue? Alderman Bourne? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, when this went through public, the Public Works Committee, I believe the bids <laughs> came in. Uh, Director Bittner, I believe it was around $41,000. 43. 43, and that was considerably lower than we originally thought it was gonna cost, and I believe the low bidder was Quashus of Sheboygan. So just so the council has that financial information. Great. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Uh, under further discussion, Alderman Bowers. Uh, thank you. I was going to ask the same question, and um, oh, yeah. but uh, Alderman Bourne asked: Is, is the uh, ramp that we have now is that going to be removed or just le left um, there? Ev eventually, I think the plan is to take the lift out of the back. Okay. Yes, and and hopefully replace the other stairs coming down so the building is somewhat okay. symmetrical. Right now, there is only you know. The, so the, this will be in the front of the building, the new ramp. Well, okay. It will be coming off the off the side, off the east end of the building, to the to the front of the building. Okay. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Bout. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Abstain. Hanna. Abstain. Heidemann. Aye. Taft. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ressler. Aye. 13 ayes, 2 abstentions. Motion carries. Do you have any other other <coughs> matters? Attorney McLean. 1352 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. That will go to law and licensing. 1353 is a resolution by Alderperson Hammond authorizing the finance director treasurer to establish and maintain one or more accounts with Multibank Securities, Inc. and Persian LLC. We don't have LLC. any other matters. I've got them. Excuse me? No. I don't have
Who's under the dog's right. desk? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mixed into our dog papers. If I don't find them, I will contact you soon. Thank you. <laughs> okay, are we finished with 1353? That will be referred to finance. 1354 is an ordinance amending a portion of subsection 2 of section 110-37 of the municipal code relating to special assessments for street improvements so as to provide for calculating the credits under the respective concrete paving warranty periods using the current proposed repaving or resurfacing assessment costs rather than the initial paving assessment. We'll also be referred to finance. 1355 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Sandy Halverson, finance department cashier, expressing her concerns about the vicious dog municipal ordinance. We'll be referred to PPNS. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>